many of the medicines that we use here in the U.S. are not affordable overseas. Um, so the paper that I commented on uh, was talked about a drug that's cheap, that's been used in Eastern Europe for a number of years, and in a new study has been shown to be probably as good as nicotine replacement. Um, and so the challenge is how can we get this medicine available more broadly than in a couple of European countries, Eastern European countries where it is now. It certainly would be a good idea for us in the U.S. to also have an inexpensive smoking cessation medicine because not all smoking cessation medicines are covered by insurance. And um, when they're not, it's expensive. So um, it would make sense for us to have that as an option as well. Uh, why is it not available to us? Well, in order for a drug to become licensed as a medicine in the United States, you have to pass through the um, regulatory process of the Food and Drug Administration. And that takes time and, more importantly, costs money and requires a sponsor. Uh, the uh, manufacturer who makes this drug in Bulgaria has never uh, felt that there was a, a market uh, for it in the United States and has never gone to the FDA. So I think we're sort of stuck here with a, a problem where we need to find a sponsor for the drug who could take it through the licensing process, but once it went through the licensing process, that sponsor would probably make it more expensive, and so we might end up with another drug that's just as expensive as others. So what I really called for in this editorial was to for the stakeholders, which would include pharmaceutical companies, regulatory authorities like the FDA, but also um, perhaps the NIH and um, nonprofit organizations concerned with global health to get together and think about how we could uh, find a novel pathway for this novel drug uh, to and other drugs like it so that we can get medicines to smokers in low and middle income countries and in the U.S. where quitting smoking would help them live longer. <laughs>